Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7 Car Reviews. Today's video I'm continuing my series of, well car reviews obviously, uh, for the update 1.29 machines. And it's going to be a two for one with this one, with both of the Ital Design VGTs getting a review. So the street mode and the off-road mode. When they were both shown off during the update 1.29 trailer, a lot of people flocked to absolutely slate on these cars. However, that's kind of subsided since people realized they're very good at grinding money. But I'm going to review them for what they actually are in game. So, Ital Design, it's a new part of the brand central and that is where you're going to purchase these cars both costing a million credits each. Stats wise, they are exactly the same. However, due to the off-road version's extra ride height, it does come under just under 800 PP, whereas the street mode comes in just over around about 812. In terms of pricing, you're getting quite a bit of bang for your buck. And in all honesty, this is just standard pricing across the board for VGT cars. So we're going to try the off-road version first. And we're going to take it to our off-road test track, which is obviously Fisherman's Ranch. So the off-road version doesn't actually come on off-road tyres from standard. This is something you're going to have to buy and put on separately. But because this is the off-road version, I thought, you know what, we will obviously take it off-road with the street version getting reviewed in the normal way. Now we've only done one single dirt review before this, which was the Toyota Celica and the ST205 from update 1.27, which was a fantastic car. Can I say the same about this? It's a different category of car, but it is still an off-road variant of a vehicle. And in all honesty, I'd say it's probably just a bit too much. These things put out 1,200 brake horsepower, and it's absolutely far too much for the majority of the dirt tracks. So the fact that there is two modes seems a little bit ridiculous, to be quite honest. You may as well have just had the one version, which was the street version. You know, having 1,200 brake horsepower in an off-road machine just makes it almost uncontrollable, especially with how the dirt physics are within GT7. Another massive drawback to this car is that it just feels like a waste of time. The fact that there's two separate versions that look very, very slightly different just seems absolutely bizarre, considering that performance-wise, they are literally the same, just one sits higher than the other. And in all honesty, in terms of building them and actually making them useful in the game, they're very, very similar setups. So in all honesty, my honest opinion is that the off-road model of this vehicle is a complete waste of time. When you drive them on their bo you know, both their standard road tyres, there is literally no difference in feeling. It's just a slight visual change. So in all honesty, this is a terrible car. So with that done and out of the way, let's see how our second ever off-road hot lap went. And it actually comes top. Well, it's obvious. It's got 1,200 brake horsepower, weighs a 1,000 kilograms, and it's absolutely ridiculous. With a 3 minutes, 7 seconds, 0 0.283, absolutely decimating the Toyota Celica GT4. But that's no surprise. Overall, this is not a very, very good car at all. So let's go and move on to the street version where it actually kind of makes sense. So the Ital Design VGT Street Mode, essentially the exact same car, but you know, the way it should actually be. This one does run obviously on road tires as standard, just like the off-road version, which again, like I said, makes no sense with a few slight visual changes, and it's obviously lower to the ground. Now, I am going to get this bit out of the way and done with. This car feels a little bit cheaply made with the fact that it has no cockpit. No, you cannot go inside this car. No, you cannot use it properly in VR. You kind of get thrown in front of the car and it looks very, very awkward and very, very weird. I honestly feel like it kind of takes me back to the times of GT5 and GT6 where we had the premium and standard car divide and it just doesn't quite sit right with me. However, that is where the negative ends, apart from the thing that is absolutely awful looking. It's actually a very, very good car to drive and almost feels like you're driving one of the most weird and wacky arcade cars, well, ever. Some VGTs within this game kind of make sense in the fact that they're close enough to real world. But this thing, 
I don't know, it just reminds me of a Hot Wheel version of a tank. It's absolutely ridiculous. It is fun to drive and it does drive, you know, pretty well. You can really throw it through the corners. And from a performance standpoint, I can't really complain. Apart from one thing, I actually feel like it's just a bit too overpowered. The fact that it has over 1200 brake horsepower, weighs a thousand kilogram and is four wheel drive, whilst the four wheel drive system does make it a bit easier to drive, at most places within GT7 this thing is just absolute overkill. However, like I have been mentioning, it's a very very good grind car, especially when turned down and tuned to around about 700 pp. And that's really where these two things shine, you know, in terms of a, you know, general overview and as they are from when you buy them, they're nothing special at all. In fact, I'd be happy to say that they're really not that good at all. However, once you kind of get those tunes going for them and kind of get them a little bit more toned down, I honestly feel like these become two very, very fun cars while still maintaining that ridiculous top speed. And that's one thing to note. These things hit around about 220 miles an hour, which is just bizarre in something that looks so ridiculous. So overall, is the Ital Design VGT honestly the worst VGT ever? Uh, no, it, to be honest, for me, because I'm just absolutely biased, I, I still to this day hate that Porsche Spider VGT, that EV thing. You know, in all honesty, this really ain't that bad. Whilst I just despise the off-road version for being completely pointless, the street version, it's not too bad. Yes, it feels a little bit kind of basic, and the fact it doesn't have an interior feels like a bit of a cop-out by Polyphony, but it makes a great sound, it goes fast, and it just is a bit of dumb fun. Even in its kind of tuned form for grinding money within GT7, it still feels like dumb fun there, so I really can't slate it for that. It's just one of those cars that comes along every once in a while that just feels like complete overkill, doesn't really fit any tone within the game, but for some reason, I still quite like it. I just cannot bring myself to absolutely hate it. So on our hot lap leaderboard, this thing comes in the 700 category, and it came 13th in that, just missing out on an overall top 20. It came in with a time of 6 minutes 32.936, just missing off the Porsche VGT Spider, which I absolutely despise. So there we have it, should you buy the Ital Design VGT, is it really that bad? To answer both questions, yes you should buy it. it in all honesty, that street mode is just a fantastic grinding car, and it's just a bit of dumb fun that sometimes GT7 needs injecting into it. So yes, you should buy it. Overall, it's not the worst VGT, but it's not the best. It almost kind of feels like a bit of a lazy design choice by Polyphony, and it came from, well, absolutely nowhere. So that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn your notifications on so you don't miss an upload from me. I upload GT7 and Motorsport content each and every day for your viewing pleasure. I just want to give a big shout out to my sponsors, the controller people and poggers for their continued support of the channel. Big shout out to my channel members as well and every other viewer. Without you guys, this channel wouldn't exist, so I really do appreciate it for your time and support. Down in the description, I'll have my donation link, my Twitter and my Discord. If you want to meet like-minded people, those are the places to be. I'm going to see you all later on, guys. Have a great day. Peace.